Hi, welcome to Trek World. Over the years, there has been no better example of brand association than what existed in the 1970s between the Mego Toy Corporation and the Star Trek franchise, although only produced from 1974 until 1977. These Mego toys are still among the most popular with Star Trek collectors. Join us after the break as we take a look what are probably two of the most desirable Star Trek toys for collectors today. After watching this video, please remember to check out our channel for our other great videos. If at any point you find yourself pleased that you have watched this video, then please smack that like button. Also, leave us a comment with your thoughts about this video. We are confident that you will find that we are blessed to have the best Star Trek community on YouTube today. Lastly, please consider becoming a VIP supporter via our Patreon site, using the link below in the description. In late 1974, Mego announced that they were introducing a Star Trek playset to use with their 8-inch Star Trek action figure line, in an effort to get to market as quickly as possible. They did publicity shots and video footage that would feature the playset at various stages of its journey from prototype to production. Also visible in the video are the action figure character shots that would be used in the commercials featuring the original five action figures introduced in late 1974. Captain's Log, Stardate 5121.0. This is an early stage prototype of the playset. The walls are cardboard and have no vinyl covering as they would later. The images on the wall are basically solid color placeholders. The stickers on the main console are very different from the final ones. There are almost certainly other differences. But be honest, each time we see the playset in print or on screen, it looks a bit different. Also note that the transporter is on the opposite side of where it would be located on the production models. The transporter itself is using an early maroon color rather than yellow. And clever use of quick cuts in the editing hides the fact that most of the action figures are not actually being held in the transporter as it spins. The exception appears to be the Kirk figure, who looks like they used his equipment belt to hold him against the rear wall with some kind of fastener. The video shown here was a marketing video put together by Mego for use by its ad agency as marketing media. This probably the oldest use of the Star Trek chant that Mego would continue to use as ambient background in all of its TV advertising. Even today, the effect is somewhat creepy. It's amazing that they actually ran ads for years without changing the chant background. The Star Trek USS Enterprise gift set with command chair, console, three telescreen cards, and five Star Trek action figures. Place Mr. Spock or any Star Trek figure into the transporter room. Spin the control knob and press the button. Mr. Spock disappears. Pretend he's left the deck of the Enterprise for outer space adventure. You can capture the Klingon and bring him back to the Enterprise. Star Trek USS Enterprise gift set. Star Trek action figures also sold separately by Mego. This little fellow right here was at the top of every child's Star Trek Christmas list in the 1970s. This is a good recent high-resolution photo of what the final production run looked like. The playset was initially released in late 1974, not long after the original five action figures. It was with this particular product that we begin to see Mego's penchant for publishing pictures and videos of their products while still in prototype stage. The first image we see here is from the 1975 Mego catalog. It clearly shows a prototype which was made from cardboard, without any of the vinyl covering we would see on the retail versions. All of the printed images on the walls lack any detail, and the view screen is a square rather than the rectangle it would become. The image on the screen appears to be from the man trap, although nothing like it would appear in the final packaging. The transporter uses the magenta color rather than the yellow one that came later. Ironically, the color would be used when the UK distributor decided to release a standalone version of the transporter. Note that Scotty has no badge and sports a beige equipment belt, and appears to be taped into the transporter with electrical tape. The coolest part of the playset was by far and away the transporter room. A figure would be placed inside the transporter, and then you would spin it by using the buttons on top of it. Then you press the stop button, and the figure would magically disappear. That same year, Sears Canada's Christmas catalog featured a completely different prototype from what was shown in the Mego catalog. It featured completely different captain's chair from the familiar chair from the series. It sported a round pedestal base and lacks the distinctive square shape. The view screen is now rectangular, 
and kind of resembles a modern-day flat-panel television display. By the time between 1974 and 1977, Mego produced no fewer than six variants that have been discovered as the years progressed. Mego had no issue whatsoever with making small changes once they began production. The retail cost of one of these playsets can vary greatly depending on the condition. You see here a never-opened mint condition playset with an asking price of $5,000. And also shown here is one that sold for $570. The box had been opened, but all the internal parts were still sealed inside their packaging. We've seen just how successful the Enterprise Action Playset was, and one of the more popular aspects of it was the clever transporter room. So the UK Mego distributor, Palatoy, decided in 1976 to release the transporter as a standalone toy. The toy was so successful for Palatoy that they used the design as the basis for the TARDIS accessory in their Doctor Who line of toys. While the collectible was well known to the Mego community, the little toy was brought to the entire world's attention when, in 2012, the hit TV series Big Bang Theory featured it in an episode. Ta-da! <gasps> A vintage mint in box 1975 Mego Star Trek transporter with real transporter action. Hot darn! We've been unable to actually find any auction listings for this, but expect to pay about $200 or so if you stumble across one. The USS Enterprise action playset sold so well, that Mego decided to bundle it with the remaining overstock of Series 1 figures and release it as the U.S. Enterprise Action gift set in 1977. It was essentially the same exact playset as the basic release, just with the figures added. The figures themselves came inside individual clear bags and again were the exact same ones as the basic issue. This means that the only way you could prove that you own an Enterprise gift set is to have a boxed version with the bagged figures inside because a loose version would be the same as the regular release. Captain's Log, Stardate 5122-6, on a mission to Gamma 6. Spock, Phones, Scotty and I beamed down, not knowing what to expect. We approached the idol. Its jaws were moving. Suddenly, Five Lilliputians appeared, each attached to the other. The aliens placed themselves in front of the idol. Strange animals tried to grab us. Bones was trapped in a man-eating plant. Suddenly, the floor gave way. I was in the cave. The Lilliputians were friendly. Mission to Gamma 6 was a success. The Mego Corporation's Star Trek mission to Gamma 6 playset is a prized gem in the world of vintage Star Trek collectibles. Known for its distinct design, captivating features, and its place in the history of 1970s pop culture merchandise, the Mego playset stands as a testament to Mego's creative marketing approach and the enduring appeal of the Star Trek franchise. The Mission to Gamma 6 playset, released in 1976, was inspired by the Star Trek episode The Apple, in which the crew of the Enterprise explores a planet named Gamma Triangle 6. The playset was a remarkable representation of the Star Trek universe. Mego's marketing strategy for the Gamma 6 playset, like the rest of its Star Trek line, focused on the idea of immersive play. The playset was designed not just as a backdrop for the action figures, but as an interactive part of the story. This approach was unique for its time, pushing the boundaries of children's play and establishing a trend that would be emulated by many toy manufacturers in the following years. Mego promoted the playset across multiple platforms, including print advertisements and comic books, TV commercials, and direct mail catalogs. The mission to Gamma 6 playset was made primarily of cardboard and plastic. The playset was notable for its interactive components, including a rock monster, a trapdoor, and unique sock puppet. As for the variants, there were not significant differences in the initial production run, but there were some minor variations, mostly concerning the color schemes of the base and the creature. The first version had a green base, while later versions had blue bases. In the case of the creature, earlier models were blue, while later ones were green. The playset is a highly sought-after item, not only because of its unique features and place in Star Trek history, but also because of its relative rarity. The cardboard construction of the playset means that few have survived intact over the decades, making a complete, unbroken playset a rare find. 
The Mego Star Trek mission to Gamma 6 playset stands out as an iconic piece of Star Trek memorabilia. Its unique design and immersive play features make it a standout item in the Mego catalog, while its rarity and connection to the beloved franchise make it a highly sought-after collectible. It is a true testament to Mego's innovative approach to toy making and the enduring appeal of the Star Trek universe. As we end this video, Trek World would like to thank our VIP supporters. If you would like to join those viewers who support us, please visit us on Patreon. The link is in the description of this video.